I guess we have one last question here, and I, I, I let you guys know all this one ahead of time. Um, for uh, you know, next year is 2010, believe it or not, um, and uh, we're going to be looking forward to a new decade. Um, there's a lot of change going on in, in IT. Um, a lot, of, you know, and next year we'll be hearing a lot of predictions. So I want to get ahead of that curve and, and um, have each of you put yourself in 2020. And to give us your, just to make it interesting, your most surprising prediction about how information technology will change by then. So I'll start with uh, John Trudenick, you. Oh, you're going to make it tough on me. So I'll be the contrarian and start out and tell you, I think it'll be how little things change for 10 years. I think we've tapped out. If you think about, and of course we have it, and there'll be ma major changes, but think back 10 years and all the things we're using today were in place from notebooks to the word processor to the spreadsheet to the PowerPoint to a whole lot of basic stuff has not changed much in 10 years. In fact, that's been Microsoft's biggest dilemma was how to convince you to buy their new versions of stuff that haven't improved much since I wrote The Lawyer's Guide to Excel in 2000. And I did write the 2007 version, but you know, I just used the same stuff and some new screenshots. So at one level, as crazy as this sounds, I think it's going to be amazing how little changes in the next 10 years. All right. Uh, Rick, what do you think? I think we're all going to be connected to the internet, literally. Sure. Um, last week I was traveling and uh, my travel companion lost her wallet in the airport. And you would not believe the pain of what you do when you're in mid-travel and you no longer have your ID. And uh, when you think about what you're able to do now with mobile devices, the only thing left is to put this inside your body, right? <laughs> um, that's going to have a, a, a number of objections, right? And of course, we'll need, we'll, it'll have an adoption cycle. There'll be early adopters who get it. Um, there'll have to be privacy laws that protect us. Um, but I think it's inevitable. And you think about the benefits of your medical records, um, your health condition. Uh, one of the things we're working on is it, uh, applications that would actually track, because on, on the iPhone, there's a GPS, there's a motion detector. So you could have this thing tracking your physical activity, connecting that to your personal trainer. I mean, these are some of the like, long-range ideas we have. So you wanted something crazy in, out there, so that's what I did. All right, great. Uh, how about you, John? What do you think? I, you know, I, I think um, one of the things that concerns me and in, in things, uh, if you take a look at in the newspaper industry around the, uh, the death of the newspaper industry, uh, and I, I, I think the, there has to be something that replaces it, but I think we're going to go through a very scary period where um, things we've relied upon for independence, a check and balance, if you want to call it, that, the, that independent news organizations played, investigative journalism. Uh, I think we're going to go through a period uh, of a scary period where there will not be a replacement model for that for some period of time, that someone will be able to economically craft. Uh, and will that mean government intercession and the creation of a U.S. equivalent of the BBC? I'm not sure, but uh, it's something that concerns me greatly. All right. How are you, Phil? I think that we are going to have a complete, you know, and, and I know John may um, have a different opinion, but I think we'll have a complete outsourcing of the whole IT hosted, managed hosting industry. I think people will view IT as something like they do their telephone. It rings. I don't fool with it. If I need more, I, I call the phone company. And I believe that people will have that same view. When I, when I graduated from college, I worked for IBM, and 90% of our revenue came from selling iron. We sold computers, and, and that was our business. Well, guess what? Today, the, vast, the majority of IBM's revenue comes from services, IT, software, SaaS-related services. Who would have thought that? I mean, think about that. IBM has gone from, in 10 years, they've gone from a true hardware vendor to a true software IT outsourcing vendor. Uh, you're talking about one of the biggest companies in the world revolutionized the whole way that they do business in just 10 years. And if they didn't make that right decision, they frankly could be out of business today. If you look at Dell Computer, they just bought Perot Systems. They're seeing the, the, the services being something that they need to, to, to be able to offer. And uh, I think more and more, and, and you know, John mentioned the um, 
I think the, the biggest issue we're going to have to overcome is the uh, is the security, uh, the lawsuit. You know, my credit cards was in that computer in that cloud somewhere, and someone stole it and charged all this stuff. Well, if I'm American Express, I want to blame the 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 cloud provider for losing it. Uh, the whole HIPAA medical records. Someone tapped into your system and got my medical records. Well. Um, I don't want to blame Blue Cross Blue Shield. I want to blame the cloud computing, the, the company that, that hosted my medical records on there. But I think in 10 years, they'll have all that figured out. They have it all ironed out. And you'll see basically IT managed services uh, as something that companies simply do not deal with internally. It's something they outsource, and they'll do it as easily uh, and quickly uh, as they do the phone or, or any other uh, service.